the way how I did is just simple. Uh, as uh, you are aware, um, I can just uh, uh, refresh. So I started adding the boundary, uh, which is coming from this layer called organization unit. So I just clicked to that layer and I uh, uh, selected the entire um, uh, entire org unit, which is called training land, and then he selected the level here, uh, which I said actually I want for the district. And uh, once I'm done with that, I just added the layer, and then I was be able to get uh, my uh, boundary layer uh, showing up. Uh, another step that I just uh, did, just I wanted to add the thematic layer, uh, which is having the detail, and uh, it was wanted to show uh, uh, HIV test performed, which is actually being uh, found in HIV uh, data element group. And then I uh, selected the specific data element, which is uh, this one here called HIV test performed. And then I uh, wanted it to show for the uh, last six months, uh, which is uh, here. And again, uh, for the uh, method of this page, I just stick uh, this single, uh, meaning aggregating all the period uh, data uh, map. And then, uh, also here, because I wanted at the facility level, so I have this region and then select. Once done, uh, I just added uh, this uh, layer to the top uh, on the top of the uh, on the top of the uh, of the boundary uh, on the boundary layer. So uh, this uh, what I uh, I just did, and the the last one I just explained the difference between. Uh, when you come to the study here, we have this classification. You have the eco interval and the eco count, and just explaining to you the how this uh, uh, classification actually works. As I said, for the eco interval, uh, it's actually taking the maximum data and then divided by for the number of classes, and then be able to draw uh, this range here uh, depending with the uh, with, with the value that uh, has been obtained at the maximum. At the maximum uh, value. So the 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 key or the the scale that is being uh, drawn here, uh, if you are using the equal interval, it's actually uh, take uh, the value, the maximum value, and then divide for the number of classes that you want for the key to be uh, to be created. But if at all you are using the equal count, it's checking for the number of facilities, and then it divide by what uh, by uh, by the classes that you have uh, you have used. So each value will be distributed depending on the number of what of the facilities. For example, if I do here, you will be able to see that uh, the maximum facilities and then divided by the classes, you will see it's having uh, six, uh, for each of the class, it's having either uh, 34 or 33 uh, number of facilities for each so whatever method that you are you are using for this classification, you need to be careful to know uh, which method that uh, should also uh, bring the interpretation much better. For example, if I have to ask you which method do you think it's uh, most or the best or the seems to be uh, clear uh, for the for, for for the user or for the people who will be actually leading you your, your map. Which method between the equal interval and the equal count? Who can tell me? Hello, people, are you following? Yes, sir, we are. Okay. Yeah, I was just, uh, <clears throat> from, from your point of view, what do you think? Uh, uh, is the best classification when you are drawing a, a map between the equal interval and the equal count? I would say equal interval. Equal interval. So that's uh, uh, for me also, uh, I would rather use the equal interval uh, for this specific kind of the data. Uh, uh, for this kind of data uh, that I want to 
uh, uh, that will be uh, actually uh, analyzing using the map, so I could rather use the, uh, the, the eco interval and the eco count. But there are some scenarios that you can use the eco, eco count. So it depends with the nature of the information that uh, uh, you want to analyze. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, but also, uh, what if you want to to save this kind of uh, this kind of uh, report? What can I do? So, saving it's just the same as you have been saving to other analytical tool, uh, like the um, uh, data visualizer and uh, and the and the pivot table. So it is still the same. So here, I will just want you to to save what actually you have created. So to me, I will just come to file here. And then he, uh, come to this uh, menu here called save. I think you know the difference between save and the servers. Uh, it has been explained for to the previous other, uh, other, other, other session. So you can just save it by putting the initial of your name. For example, you can just put Tuzo and then uh, specify the word uh, uh, when in the and 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 where so I can just say HIV uh, test uh, performed maybe uh, for last six what six months. So once done, I just go ahead and save. So as, as you can see, after saving and then uh, it comes here as my title. So this map, which means it's showing uh, for the HIV test uh, performed for the last six months, maybe uh, by facility. So you can just add it there by, uh, by facilities. So uh, another thing that I wanted to demonstrate to you uh, is, um, uh, what if you want to add, um, uh, uh, for example, I would like you to add uh, a facility layer. So let me uh, start a new one. So uh, for example, I want to add the facility layer. I can just start uh, by adding the boundary layer. For example, I want to show uh, for the district, for the entire, uh, organization unit, and uh, uh, if I wanted to add a facility layer, because I'm using, uh, we have seen uh, the, how to add the boundary layer, you need to come here uh, to the add layer, and then uh, you will see this layer called the facility layer. So I uh, can just come here, and then uh, click uh, for the entire um, uh, organization unit, and you see by default, by level, uh, it has been selected the facility, the facilities, and then be able uh, uh, to add. So if I add, uh, of course, I have just selected the ownership, but by default, you can just come here and be able to select the type of uh, uh, or whatever the group set that you want to to see the distribution of facility. For example, uh, by the, uh, the the one selected by default was ownership, uh, but I can rather, rather just use by the type. For example, I want to see the distribution of facility. Uh, for example, to know uh, the dispensaries, uh, the health center, the distribution of dispensaries, health center to a given location. So I can just go ahead and update it. As you can see, I will be having, for example, I can zoom one of the, uh, let me zoom this one, which is somehow crowded. As you can see, I can just zoom uh, one of the, uh, one of the location having a different uh, uh, facility, uh, facility type. So, and uh, each of these icon you see, it has been defined in the region here. So, uh, for example, if you know uh, which this one uh, was it, you know that this was kind of uh, a, P, a PHC. So whenever you see this icon, you see that this is a PHC. So, uh, for example, if you want to know how many PHCs that are there within this given uh, district, which was called a fish district, you can be able to, uh, to identify them by, by checking this icon. Are we good? But also, um, uh, you can also uh, want, for example, um, 
to show. Uh, for example, uh, I can just open uh, the, the map that I just created before, for example, and then be able to add the, uh, the facilities, uh, the facility layer on top of it. So for example, if you want to do that, I just uh, go ahead and uh, select, remember the map that uh, I was, I created, it was called, it started with my keyword tool and then it, uh, here it is. And then I can just go ahead add the facility layer. Uh, for example, I want to know uh, the distribution that among this data that I uh, found here, which facility is having that kind of HIV test performed. So I can just uh, click here and then select the type and then update or add that layer on top of it. So of course, uh, found uh, there are, it's crowded, but if you, uh, you can, uh, you can keep on zooming it, you will find uh, that, for example, you find this icon, uh, which is actually the PHC, uh, one of these icon called the uh, hospital gateway, is having a lot of uh, people being uh, tested for the what? Uh, for the HIV. So you can also add a different layer on top of, uh, of other, other uh, other area that has been has been created, but another useful functionality that you might uh, need to know is that you can also try to increase the uh, the size. Uh, what I can say the the size of the uh, or if you want to make it transparent. For example, here uh, looks so uh, looks so like very dark, but you can use this opacity to uh, to set. For example, if you want to be like and faint or to be like more brighter, you can keep on resizing on uh, this uh, this feature, uh, this feature here. So uh, I want also uh, <clears throat> uh, one of you uh, to kind of uh, be able to add one of the, I can just go ahead and remove this facility layer here. And then, uh, uh, I can just also want of you to add another layer, a thematic layer uh, with the following detail and then let's then uh, discuss together. For example, uh, let me ask you to add, uh, to add another, uh, another thematic layer uh, with the following uh, detail. Let me uh, share my screen. Let me stop and share to my screen. So uh, I would like you to add another thematic layer with this detail here. Can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, I can see it. Yes, yes. So um, I want you to, uh, to, to be able to, to any other thematic layer uh, having uh, this detail, uh, the, will be the data element value type and it's found in this HIV uh, group. And the data element is called the HIV test positive and also added for the last six months uh, for the district now. So for now, go for the district and then uh, let's see how we can fit if you want to see for the mail and things like that. So I'll just give you uh, another uh, two minutes uh, for you to, uh, to, add this, uh, to add this thematic layer.